Hey, what is up? Welcome to this episode of the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Lofermento, and there's one thing I know about all of us entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, and that is at one time or another, we've thought about franchising, either when you're starting your first business and you think to yourself, why don't I just buy into a franchise with a proven business model, or you already have a business and you're thinking to yourself, can I just franchise this? What are some good growth and scaling opportunities for me from here? Well, that's why We've got an incredible guest here in today's session. Her name is Dominique Main. Let me tell you about Dominique. Dominique has helped hundreds of aspiring entrepreneurs get into business for themselves. She specializes in helping people find the courage, motivation, and practical application to make their business dreams a reality. Her company, Bright Friend, helps aspiring entrepreneurs determine what they even want from business ownership so that they can find the right franchise opportunities to support their goals. One way or another, there's going to be a lot of food for thought for us when it comes to growth and strategic operations and opportunities. So I'm excited about this one. Let's dive straight into my interview with Dominique Main. All right, Dominique, I'm so excited. So much of the wonderful world of franchising that a lot of us don't know that we'll get into today. But first things first, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. Heck yeah, I'm excited, but you're going to have to take us beyond the bio first so that we know how you amassed all of this wealth of knowledge and experience when it comes to franchising. Who's Dominique? How did you get here? Well, Brian, I'm a serial entrepreneur myself, so I've owned multiple companies in the service industry and construction and real estate. I've been a landlord with long-term rentals since I was in my 20s. I have a short-term rental property over in Florida, and I've been in franchising for 18 years. So I love everything about business ownership and helping people to achieve the benefits of that. Yes, I love that overview because obviously you're preaching to the choir here at the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. We love all things entrepreneurship and obviously franchising is just one of those opportunities. It's cool to me because you have so many hats that you wear and you understand life as a true business owner, as an entrepreneur, as one of us. But with that in mind, walk us through with even, I guess we could start with your own portfolio. How do you decide what business ventures to go into that has that gets your energy and your attention versus where you decide? side, you know what, it's a great opportunity, but maybe not for me. Brian, that really starts with the why. And I know sometimes that's a phrase that's overused in business, but I, I beg to differ because really what makes us successful in any venture is our focus on it. And what makes us really focus on it is that it's what we really want. It's what we love. And so I always encourage people to dig deep and explore what it is that they really are looking to accomplish with the business, not just make money, because everybody wants to make money, but what, what lights you up? What makes you happy that you're involved in something? Because the combination of those things, what you love and making money is, is really where the power comes from. Yeah, I'm glad that you called that out so early on in our session today here because you're right. I think a lot of people have heard that advice of find your why. Obviously, Simon Sinek has really popularized so much of the science that goes behind finding our why and why that's a powerful strategy. But Dominique, I would argue that a lot of people don't even know what their why is and they don't even know how to find their why. You called out money is one potential reason why, but there's a heck of a lot more to that when it comes to life. What do some of those whys look like? How can we actually go about uncovering our whys? So I like to ask three questions deep when I am helping someone to uncover their why. Because if you were to tell me, Brian, that you want to start a business because you want to make more money, I want to know why that's important to you. Because that's going to tell me more about what drives you and what you have to offer the world. So being able to learn more about who you are as a person and what is making you happy in your existing job and what's driving you nuts in your existing job will actually help me to guide you to a business that's going to help you to create more of what you love and less of what you don't like. 
Yeah, for sure. Again, preaching to the choir, because for me, where my head goes immediately is a lot of people will want you and I, Dominique, to talk about money, but I go more to like lifestyle, for example. I love the life that I get to live. For example, when my niece and nephew come here to Florida, I get to spend so much time with them, and that's so rewarding to me. I get to travel. I've been to over 30 countries around the world. There's so much cool stuff that comes with it. Now, obviously, there's a lot of work that comes with it, but with that in mind, Where do you even start to uncover those opportunities that align with our whys? Because like we said, and you're a living example of that, there's a lot of options when it comes to starting or growing our businesses. Where do we begin in finding the right opportunity for our whys? That comes from forming strategic partnerships, and we've done the legwork on that. We are a member of a group that has over 600 different franchise and business opportunities within it, and we've taken the time and put in the energy to study those so that in a conversation with somebody who wants to open a business, we are able to quickly help them to match with something that really fits who they are and what they're looking for. Yeah, Dominique, I want you to talk more about that because when we talk about franchising, obviously we've we've all seen franchises in their various shapes and forms. I think of like the subways of the world, the in and outs of the world, where we all are familiar with these franchises, but we don't think about franchises as local, as real, tangible business operations that we as everyday so-called normal people can get into. We think about the big corporate ones. Give us kind of that canvas of how wide the franchising world is. The cool thing actually about franchising is it's sort of a hybrid between corporate world and small business entrepreneur life because you get a lot of the benefits of big corporate because of the alliance of all these locations that are doing the same thing, but you also have a lot more freedom than you would in a corporate role. Yeah, with that in mind, I mean, I think about, yeah, you talk about the intersection of that. I So when I lived in Los Angeles, smoothies, that was like a daily part of my everyday existence. And going down to my local smoothie shop, that was a franchise. And I saw the franchise owner, they were very involved in it, Dominique, but they also had a great staff in place. Talk to us about the workload of that, because a lot of people look for, unfortunately, I'm going to call a lot of people out, they look for the easy way out, not realizing that franchises can also be a lot of work. What do some of those is there a an actively involved franchise ownership model is there a passively involved i don't even know what that looks like in the world of franchising yes so and one of the ceos that i've worked with in franchising that's been in the business for 30 plus years says that if you look at your credit card statement you're going to see that you do business with many franchises every month so it's a lot more common even i think than a lot of us realize but in terms of the owner's day-to-day involvement in a franchise business there are there's every opportunity under the sun you could spend full-time efforts plus investing into a franchise business you can have a business that's what we call in the business semi-absentee or even absentee where you're investing and you're overseeing but you have management in place that is that are running the day-to-day operations yeah, which I think is an important overview because I feel like, gosh, it, it, probably decades ago now that Tim Ferriss published the four hour work week, but that painted the picture of truly the four hour work week where a lot of people think that it is hands off, which you talked about the absentee owner model. What does that look like? Are those viable? Is it certain industries where that works? Because I'm thinking about the smoothie business. There was always stuff going wrong with the machines and with staff calling out. But Dominique, you obviously see so much more of the franchising world than the rest of us do. What sort of industries align with these different models that you're introducing us to? Well, one of the concepts that I learned early on in business school and always stuck with me is there's no such thing as a free lunch. There is absolutely no get rich quick schemes that are going to really truly produce what what we would like them to. There's always an investment and to be to receive greater compensation, we always need to create greater value. So in the franchising space, for somebody who wants to be semi absentee or absentee, it's not magical. They're going to invest money to make that happen through hiring people to basically replace themselves. And they're going to find concepts uh, and we would be able to match them with concepts that are designed to be run by management instead of having to be run by the owner. There are both in the franchise space. There are concepts that really only work with that owner day to day. But some concepts are so duplicatable, so simple that anybody almost can do it. So if you're willing to 
put the investment in of the finances and hire that great management to run it, you really can be pretty hands off. And I'll tell you kind of a cool new thing that's coming up in franchising is that there are concepts who are actually running the day-to-day operations for their franchise owners for a fee. So if you have somebody who's truly investor mentality where they just want to put the money in, they can have an operations team at the franchisor level running that for them. Yeah, Dominique, that is very cool. And I'm super excited to go even deeper into this world with you here today. But I think you brought up an important business concept, which is I remember in my early 20s when I was running my first business, I asked someone, should I do this or should I do that? And my mentor at the time said to me, he's just like, do you have more time or do you have more money? Because you have to be able to answer that first. So I love that you introduced us to that concept here because already you've kind of spilled the beans. You love business in so many different ways. So it makes sense that you think about those ways. With that in mind, obviously knowing that there are different industries aligned with what model that we want, you talked about the important word that I'm sure you get asked about all the time, which is of course, investment. And I love that you've been super transparent here that these are the real conversations. doesn't mean you're gonna make easy money when you invest into a franchise. What do investments look like? And I know it's a huge wide range, probably up to millions of dollars, but for people who are listening to this thinking, is this viable for me personally? What are some of, what does that range even look like? We can work with people who have as little as $20,000 available to invest and decent credit all the way up to millions of dollars. And obviously when you think about return on investment, there's a range of what you put in is what you're gonna get out to some extent on a multiplier. And so there's a pretty wide variety. I would say for anyone who is willing to invest themselves, their focus, their time, their energy, and some of their finances, as long as they have at least $20,000. There are some great loan products out there like SBA Express Financing and other uh, government or private money that are available to do that. Yeah, Dominique, I really appreciate the way you answered that because it's not easy. I know that that's a tough question to answer because it is such a wide range, but that's a great ballpark number that at least gives us some sort of an idea. I want to ask you this question. I hadn't planned on going here with you today, but just knowing that you are one of us, you're a fellow entrepreneur and business owner, I always come back to this debate because I get asked all the time of can anybody be an entrepreneur? And and for you, I'm going to extrapolate it to also franchising because you talk about the different models. Can anybody be a franchisee? Or I guess it would be franchisor, I guess. And so can anybody open up their own franchise or are there certain traits that you see in the really successful franchise opportunity takers? The answer to that question is yes, anyone can be a franchise owner, but not everyone should be a franchise owner. And one of the things that we do in our business is when we're looking at what somebody wants from a business is helping them to determine if a business is really the best way for them to create wealth or create freedom or whatever it is lifestyle wise that they're looking for because business is not the only way to do that and sometimes people have gotten the idea of business in their head from somebody they've seen do it well but it's not necessarily the right solution for them now obviously i'm a huge fan and i've helped as i said and you mentioned hundreds of people to do that but it's it's something that you want to go into with eyes wide open about what it can and can't give you realistically i love the way you answered that dominique now i have to ask you why shouldn't someone go about that what do those conversations look like i do talk to a lot of people who want to get rich quick they feel like they're at times entitled to certain results and they aren't thinking about what they are going to receive for what they're putting in. They're more of looking for something easy to fix whatever it is they're trying to solve in their life. Those people should not be in franchising. Sometimes people are looking for other people to uh, make make life better for them. And they get a, a great salesperson, a great franchise salesperson who will tell them, this business is amazing. You're going to love it. You're going to make all of this money. And they get into it and they realize owning any kind of business, if, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So there are there's a price to pay, whether it's money or time or both. And there is the, uh, frankly, if you're not willing to take some risks, it, it's not for you, right? It's, it's just not the right, it's not the right solution to that problem of how can I make my life better? 
Yeah, really well said, especially because we are navigating the realities of business ownership, any business ownership, which Dominique, I love the fact that you come on here bringing us the realities of all of these situations. To that point, what is it? What are some of those realities about franchising that sounds great to all of us in theory where we think, oh, I'm just going to buy this already successful business and open a location and it's going to make money for itself. What are some of those early days looking like for new franchise owners? You mentioned something earlier, Brian, about the character qualities of people that are great business owners and things like strong leadership ability, resilience, humility are things that come up often in conversations because when you start a business, there will be obstacles. There will be financing obstacles. There will be staffing obstacles. There will be people around you that you were hoping that would support you that just can't be that person. So there are always surprises. And if you, it's really about attitude. If you have the attitude of this is something that's a next step for me that I want to engage in and I'm not afraid to fail because I'm, I'm, I want this, right? This is what I'm going for in my life. Then all those obstacles are real irrelevant because you will get through them one way or the other. If you are hoping that it will be easy and can just kind of sail through, then uh, probably be disappointed. Yes. So spoiler alert to all of you listening. It's not going to be easy. And Dominique, again, coming back to like that nerdy business advice that we've all received along the way. I've always loved that concept of when you're working with humans, you're always going to have human problems. And and a franchise is no different. Along those lines, though, if, if people have gotten through this part of today's session with us where we've talked about really how hard it is and, and spoiler alert, any business that you start is going to be hard. Listeners, this is something I want to preach to you today. Dominique wants to preach you today. We've lived these things. But along those lines, obviously, franchising does have its benefits. And there's a lot that it can accelerate when it comes to your growth journey, when it comes to your success journey as a business owner. Dominique, shed some light on this. Since we have given some of these disclaimers, what are some of the benefits of going the franchising route? As I mentioned earlier, franchising in some ways is a combination of corporate benefit and small business ownership benefit. And really what you're getting there are systems and processes that are already established. And that really does inc- or decrease rather the risk significantly of business ownership because you're not having to fail along the way as often to discover what works. You already have the formula for success. What can be tricky for people is following that formula. So that's one of the things that telling the difference between if you are a franchise entrepreneur or a true classic entrepreneur is how independent are you? Because franchise owners that do really well are collaborative and and very trainable. They want to absorb those best practices that have already been done well. Yeah, I like hearing your perspective on that because it's a side of business ownership that we don't think about traditionally because franchise ownership is its own place where you can gain skills and experiences and and you can have your own talents and skill set that contribute to your success there. Dominique, what are some of those, I don't want to use the word obligations, but what are some of those interactions that franchise owners have with, I mean, you call it kind of that intersection between being an entrepreneur and corporate. And I think that's such a clear visual because it almost is like you do buy a backroom support staff that will help you through things that they've seen before. What are those obligations or what do those interactions look like as far as getting that support? They vary by the franchise concept, but my favorite interactions or systems are the ones where the franchise corporate office provides those franchisees, those local owners with regular one-on-one coaching and also provides a forum where franchise owners can get together and share their best practices. And when they're together, whether it be as a group or in those one-on-one settings, that they are discussing financial performance and how to improve that. They are working on KPIs and coaching based on how to maximize the opportunities there. They are talking through issues like staffing challenges or marketing or supply chain issues, and they are sharing those best practices and growing together as a group. 
Yeah, I love that perspective, especially I'm a big believer in the power of teamwork. I always say a rising tide lifts all boats. And I think that that's really at the cornerstone of what franchising looks like is that the corporate office wants you to succeed. You want to succeed and you bring an established product that has a proven model to your local community. If, if it's an in-person thing or to your industry, whether you're doing it remotely or in person, I think that's a really powerful concept. Dominique, there's a flip side to the franchising coin, though, that I think you are uniquely experienced and knowledgeable about to speak on because Brightfran, your company, you don't just look for franchising opportunities. You also pave the path for the right businesses to expand through franchising. I know so many successful seven and eight figure entrepreneurs that get to that point in their business where they say, should we franchise this? We've never had a guest on to talk about that, Dominique. So walk us through those considerations where your mind goes when it comes to us as business owners asking that question of, should we franchise this out? The number one consideration when someone is thinking about franchising their business is, is this business model scalable? And I'm going to say this in, in kind of a, a rough way, but it, can it, is, it so, is it so simple that, that anybody can do it, right? Is it idiot proof? Because a lot of times in, in franchising, your frontline employees are going to be teenagers, right? Who, you know, we all know that the human brain doesn't fully develop till we're 25. So making things very simple to where consistency happens, right? That's the McDonald's model is that people get the same experience every time. That's why they have been so widely, wildly successful. So someone who is thinking about franchising their business should already have completely foolproof scalable systems in place. So that's consideration number one. Consideration number two, and just as important, is that they are abundantly well capitalized. They've put aside a, a healthy nest egg because it's it's not inexpensive to scale that, has amazing rewards on the other end. And one of those can be selling to a private equity company and watching the whole thing explode into this amazing national brand. But you have to have the money to get it to the point where it's attractive to those groups if that's something that you're interested in doing. Yeah, really important considerations. I love how clearly you laid both of those out for us here today. And Dominique, I think that one word that stands out to me in your answer right there is the important word, which is scale. Obviously, you have quite a few businesses in your own portfolio. You talked about rental properties being included in there. Scale is a word that we throw around so frequently. What's your view on scale? When is the right time for us to look at something as, hey, I'm going to grow this, I'm going to optimize it, I'm going to get it to that point of what you just introduced us to of simplicity versus just saying, hey, this is something that I'm going to keep throwing more money into and I'm going to continue to scale my existing operations. How do you strategically make those decisions? I think being a great listener and observer will always tell us a lot about how scalable something really is because it's the customer, it's the end user that, that tells us whether something is being demanded. Our profits tell us whether something is being demanded and, and efficiently run. So using those metrics, using that knowledge, that information, and not just doing something because we want to or we're excited about it or our egos are behind it, but really looking at it from the perspective of the demand and the, the support behind it. Yeah, Dominique, I'll tell you what, I, you and I didn't know where our conversation was going to go here today, but there's one area where I knew I wanted to pick your brain today, and that is about something that every entrepreneur faces, and that's mindset. I think it's so cool that you've helped literally hundreds of entrepreneurs navigate these waters, but I also know that there's a lot of important words, some of which you've shared with us here today, resilience, overcoming obstacles, all of these things, resourcefulness, having capital, all of these things go into it, and it all means that it's certain certainly not easy. It's something both of us have stressed here today. What are some of those minds? Oh, and I want to throw risk into that because I think you uniquely help people navigate risky waters. What are some of the ways that you help business owners and entrepreneurs and franchise owners navigate the mental side of this game that we all know and love, Dominique? Not having enough information is a legitimate issue when someone is thinking about starting a business. So we spend a lot of time assisting people with that. Research is critical to making a smart decision about business ownership. So 
somebody not knowing what it is that they need to know to make a business decision, that is, is an area where we help. We teach entrepreneurs what boxes they need to check to comprehensively evaluate an opportunity. Yeah, incredibly important. Knowledge is power. Fellow entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, how frequently do we hear that? And Dominique, it's a few of your answers here today that you really come back to kind of the emotion behind so many of our decisions is I want to make easy money. So I think this is right versus having that information. So I absolutely love that. I want to transition a little bit because I think the work that you're doing with Bright Friend is incredible when it comes to setting people up for success, which is all we can ask for. And it's right there on the headline. We're going to talk about your business website, which is at brightfran.com. We'll talk about that at the end of today's episode. But your big headline there is franchising made easy. Dominique, you've helped so many people do this. How can they set themselves up for success through working with someone like you to make that transition easier in a world where it may not be straightforward, but they will get through it? We're big believers in getting support and we give support to those entrepreneurs. We've all failed one way or the other in our lives. And sometimes PTSD kicks in when we are thinking about challenging ourselves again. So we help entrepreneurs to face their fears and gain the courage to build a life they would truly love. But not doing it themselves on their own, but leveraging the experience of others, leveraging our support and our knowledge so that they can do that with more ease and more intelligence. Yeah, I love that. That support is so key for all of us because it's certainly one aspect that you and I haven't talked about here today is that it can be a lonely journey. And I think so many elements to what we talked about today takes that loneliness out of it, which is super important. I also want to ask you this because on your website, I think that you all lay things out so nicely. You show how much experience your entire team has when it comes to franchising, but also there's so many different types of brands that you showcase that you have worked with from Midas or talking about breaks to Arby's, something that we've all known and seen all of our lives. It's kind of an American staple at this point to the pizza factory. There's so many cool ones, but Dominique, it seems to me like you are agnostic as to what franchise people may end up in, but I also know that you have experience across so many different industries. What are some of those industries that you've seen people gravitate towards? And then kind of a, a curveball to this question is, what are some industries that you know there's opportunity in, but people may not even be aware of? One of my favorite industries to promote is the home services category, because for us millennials and younger, a lot of times we just don't do our own handyman stuff. I grew up with my dad fixing the VCR and the microwave and the cars and the fence and everything, right? That's that's not the way our society operates anymore. People hire all of that stuff out, the landscaping, the housekeeping, everything, that whole category of businesses is absolutely booming and the margins are amazing. Yeah, I want to go there, actually, because I totally agree with you. Maybe it is the millennials in us speaking now is that we didn't grow up doing any of those things ourselves. Shout out to our dads. Shout out to everyone who was handy and knew all of these things that we were never passed down on because we were on AIM and doing other things on our computers. But I think that that's a powerful opportunity because it's never too late. And Dominique, I'd love to hear your perspective on this. Does that mean, let's say I want to open a home services franchise. Do I myself have to be handy or is there that that function where I can be the true business owner and find the right talent? And if so, because I hope that's going to be your answer. If so, is that the type of hiring support and personnel support that these corporate brands help franchise owners with? Yes, the franchise concepts we recommend in that space all have recruiting centers and call centers within their corporate operations. So they take all the inbound traffic that are interested in your business and literally get them booked on your calendar. And that recruiting center, they are able to drive uh, employees to you. And, and to answer your question, no, you do not need to know anything about landscaping, being a handyman, roofing, windows, any of it. Their executive business models are looking for people with management skills who want to run the business, work on it, not in it. 
Yes, that's incredible. I'm really glad that I asked you that because I think a lot of us have the tendency of thinking, oh, if I run an Arby's, I've got to understand, you know, how to process meat and how to cook meat. Hopefully not process meat, but all of those things that go into <laughs> into businesses is that executive hat. You called it out right there. And I think that's super powerful. Dominique, as we come to the end of today's session, I want to ask you about the future of franchising because I know that so many businesses and so many industries are being changed by technology or AI or just trends in the market. Marketplace. We're always in an evolving world. What's your perspective on where franchises are going and how things are changing? Well, if you imagine having the research and development of a huge company behind the operations of your small local business, that's what franchise owners have. Everything when it comes to technology and AI is all being worked on by the very best people in their field that an individual business owner couldn't afford by themselves. But collectively, as a group of 100 franchise owners or a 1000 franchise owners have these amazing resources that are staying on the cutting edge of all that for their owners and figuring out the best ways to use AI in service to their customers and making their employees more efficient and overall creating a better experience and higher profitability. Yes, really well articulated right there, Dominique. And I am excited to pose my last question to you because I ask it at the end of every episode and I have no idea which direction you'll take it in. And that is your one takeaway. Obviously, there's a whole new world. I feel like you opened up huge new doors to our listeners here today. But with all of the things that they've learned and that they've heard from your perspective and experiences within business, within franchising, what's that one takeaway? What's the one action that you encourage everyone, whether they're a entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, to take after hearing this session here today? If you're thinking about expanding your business portfolio, either for the first time, or you want to franchise your business or whatever that may be, you want to expand and you're thinking about using franchising to do that, get help, get some, some expert advice, because there are so many people that like, like myself, like our company that love to provide that assistance. And you never know until you ask. I run into so many people every day who have dreamed for decades about owning their own business and never tried it. And they, they never took the chance on themselves. They never ex even explored it. And when I finally get to speak with that person who is t get to having the courage to check it out, it's amazing how they find things out about themselves and what they're looking for and the opportunities that are available to them that they would have never otherwise known. Yes, I love the way you answered that question. Conversations, information literally never hurts. And I'm going to call out one ingredient right there, Dominique, that you challenged all of us to embrace, which is have the courage. If you've been thinking about this, you're thinking it for a reason. It lives inside of you. This is something I always say to entrepreneurs is that if you're already thinking about it, it's already there and you can't ignore it. So Dominique, I love that you've encouraged us to have that courage and have those conversations. It's a natural segue because I'm going to call out, you've got your phone number right there that people on your can go to your website and call you all to start having these conversations and exploring them. So drop those links on us. Where should listeners go to find out more about Bright Fran and all the ways that you help franchise owners, franchise expanders, or first time franchise interested parties who want to become an owner? Brightfran.com is an excellent way to check us out and get some more information about how we support current and aspiring entrepreneurs. You can also email me anytime, dmain at brightfran.com. And I love to connect with people on LinkedIn and I publish regular free video content on franchise ownership on LinkedIn. So uh, you can find me there as well under Dominique Main. Yes, listeners, you already know the drill. We are making it as easy as possible for you to find Dominique as well as Bright Friend. We are linking down to all those resources down below in the show notes, wherever it is that you're tuning into today's episode. You can find her business website at brightfriend.com as well as a link to her personal LinkedIn. It's actually how we came across Dominique's work. Our entire team was super impressed with all the value that Dominique is committed to providing in the marketplace on so many things that we don't know about because we can't know about it until we talk to someone who has experience. So check out the show notes, find those links to Dominique's website, her personal LinkedIn. Otherwise, Dominique, on behalf of myself and all the listeners worldwide, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Brian.